Hey everybody, I'm Steph. I'm Michael. Today we have our top 10 games that we learned in March 2023. What year is it? (laughs) So I must say, it was a slow month for both of us because you were stuck in Maine in a snowstorm. It's true. I did go to, uh, I went to a few conventions in March, but I made it a point to not learn many games at one of them. So I didn't. Yeah, you did nothing but play old classics. Seeked. I sought out. Yeah, seeked. Uh, That one's all right. I wanted to play games that were my favorites. So I I made that a point. You played a lot of some of my favorites. So so. if you uh, are a fan of blog stuff, will write about just about everything she plays uh, in her blog on BGG called All the Meeples of the Rainbow, which is yep. where her shirts come from. And wh- I also usually have them. <laughs> um, but uh, you should definitely check that out if you are interested in all the games Steph plays. She will always post them in her blog. And it's the place that you will usually, but not always, you will usually find her top 10 on her blog every single month. It's true. Everybody so, loves that blog, and I love it too because it keeps everything nice and organized. And you get to find out, like I said, usually before you find out here. I didn't learn any expansions last month, but I know no. in April I, I have a goal to at least learn a few because there's some that I really want to well, play. Well, we have a lot on our review shelf. Yeah. So there's a we bunch. do have to play a lot of expansions. I definitely want up. to also. Um. But March was March. I I played thirty one new games in March, which and I played. You might say, new. "Oh, hey, Michael, that's one per day. That's not a lot." On like normally, we will have somewhere between fifty and ninety new games played in a. Ninety is too many, by the way. No, that's what's going to happen in April. It always happens every April. <laughs> April is your time. Dr. Sign, thanks for the subscription. Thanks for subscribing. There's been a lot of subscriptions, uh, including me. Actually, Dr. Sign is one month ahead of me. He is cutting in a Little couple of days, er, er, a day or two. He is cutting into that. Yeah, because you did 30 months. I just did 30, and he did 31. Wow. So he, is a, he has now caught up. Drove in, driven ahead for a month ahead of me. That's good really Dr. Sun. good job. Kicking butt. And Dr. Sun was also the first subscriber to our Game Guildies channel, where it is myself and Steph and Derek Porter, which is Wigsby Chuck 1 2, and Amy, who is Duchess 1105. You can find us uh, streaming on Game Guildies. We're going to be increasing the schedule at some point, but currently we are streaming at a minimum every Monday. Monday at 6 p.m. Central. And if you are watching us on YouTube or checking us out on Steph's blog, then you can check us out on twitch.tv slash boardgamersteph every... What? Oh, on Twitch, yeah. That's what I... I heard YouTube. Let me say it one more time. If you are watching us on YouTube... Stop interrupting. If you're watching us on YouTube or on Steph's blog, that means you're not on Twitch. You should be on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash BoardGamersTeph every Wednesday and Sunday night at 5 p.m. Central. I almost want to start the in the whole top 10 over. We can. No, it's fine. We can we can just roll with it. So 31 new to me games, 40 new to you games. I had more to choose from. Because you usually play a lot of games on BGA with Dan. And Shrey and not company. this time. Well, I played it one. No, day. that's not true. There are two of them at least near your top ten. There's, uh, there's one I learned on BGA. There's one of these in your top ten you learned on BGA, but there's a there's two or three more that's on your list that I have never seen before. So, mm. well, one of them one in the top ten. Therefore, as I was saying, the reason she has more new to me games is because she plays several on BGA with Dan. So, and that's there, there were happens. a few. There were like... Five, and I only had 53 five, games. Something. 53 whole games played this month. Low 31 rookie numbers. New. Rookie numbers. Yeah, played more in person. This is true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Matt said Dr. Sign is number one subber on Game Guildies. He was... Matt was number two subber. That's true. So... Solid number two. Solid number two. 
That's my favorite dad joke. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Solid number two. All right, starting with who? You. It always starts with me. I'm just catching up on the chat. Okay. So, oh, Dr. Sun booked his trip to Dice Tower. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, that's good. We're gonna see you there. My number ten game was a game I learned at Adam 2023. Nice. Um, which was an event that we uh, went to, uh, hosted by Eagle Griffin and Inside Up Games and Queen Games. And so, hey, thanks for following, Captain. Thanks for following. And I played this cute little game uh, from Birdwood Games called Dog Park. Never heard of this company before. Never heard of this game before. I mean, I've heard of the game many times. I have it's been all over social media, but I, I know you don't really go on social media. What social media? Exactly. Oh, exactly. oh, you mean the, the Instagrams and and the Facebooks is in the tw- I'm on Facebook. That's all. I'm old. Anyway, Dog Park. Um, it's a now the review on BGG says it's a midway game. Mm-hmm. I think it's probably a midway game for maybe your light average newbie gamer but not the game's BGG. fairly simple it's fairly light but it's so cute it's got set collection aspects uh it's got um some strategic gameplay when you're walking your dogs through the dog park you can like occupy spaces that you think other people are going to go to and that blocks their way on the path where you're going to be collecting treats and squeaky toys and balls and it's so cute it's so cute. I like the different events. Yeah. You get different events for each each round. And you're collecting these dogs to take on walks. And you're trying to get collars on them. And So yeah. the gameplay is not anything that you guys have not seen before. Um, it is where you are basically doing a hidden bid of some of your victory points. So it's really important to not go crazy and spend all your victory points for this. But then you're going to be placing, depending on who goes first, you're going to be placing your walker underneath one of four dogs in this drafting area. And someone can go behind you, but if they tie, the person in front's going to get it. And if uh, whoever's ahead, otherwise, on whoever spends more chance, uh, Channel points. Victory points uh, is going to get this cute little pupper. Well, certain puppers are going to give you uh, more points if you have majorities of those at the end of the game, somewhere between two and eight points. So it's not insignificant. Uh, I mean, it's not, it, it, it is, you want to make sure that you get uh, a lot of majorities of many different sets, but you can only draft two puppers per round. And then you can take up to three of them on walks. But if you do, you've got to pay uh, some of those dog treats and sticks and balls that you have collected. Each pupper wants a different type or groups of uh, resources. And so you want to make sure to have those resources in order to uh, walk your puppers. If you walk the pupper, then you're going to get uh, victory points, and you'll get a collar on those dogs. If you don't have a collar on a dog, it's going to be worth minus points to you because uh, you're leaving the poor little pupper at home. So anyway, uh, a lot of the dogs have special abilities, and I think that that really makes it even better. Mm-hmm. You know, some of them will give you bonuses. After you've drafted, you're going to take a walk with the dogs at the park, and you're going to get bonuses based on what those dogs can do. For example, one of the dogs I had was anytime you get a ball, you get a free stick. And so you get to collect all your resources that you can use on each of the four days that you're going to take your dogs out on walks. And there's hidden victory conditions and stuff. Like I say, it's nothing that you haven't seen before, but it's super cute and melded together quite nicely. With the original art and so production. Is, the production was really nice. Absolutely. Uh, I like it. Barely off your top 10. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, I I would play it again for sure. I like it more than a game like Wingspan, uh, which is good for... Uh, it's been compared a lot to Wingspan, hasn't it? 
for the weight and the comboing, I, I think Wingspan's probably a little bit heavier, but it's mm-hmm. not like much heavier. It's like in the same wheelhouse. Same thing. wheelhouse, I would. But I, I prefer this to something like that because I, it just works better for me. But so I think that people who do like Wingspan would probably like this. I think so. The only thing that this could do better is if they gave each pupper a name. Oh <laughs> my goodness! You can make it the you can make it just Sharpie your own names onto them. Uh, yeah, that was that was that was the, team, that, the suggestion. Yeah, it's the legacy game. Actually, one of the players <laughs> actually named his puppers as he drafted them. <laughs> it's so cute. That was cute. Anyway, right. that's my number ten. Dog Park number ten. Probably spent more time on that than normal, yeah. but that's a game that. I don't. I haven't. I just haven't heard of it at all. Well, so, I have, but yeah. Yeah. So that's for y'all. <laughs> My number ten is Marvel Splendor. Mm. Uh, basically, it is a themed Splendor game. Actually, it's Splendor Marvel in BGG. I think. Splendor Marvel. I huh. think. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever it is, whatever it is, it is Splendor with a Marvel theme. Uh, so the difference is. <laughs> Are little, it's very little differences. So if you know Splendor, you can easily pick this up. But um, there are little Avengers icons on some of the cards. So it's a longest road kind of thing where if you have more Avengers symbols, then you can take that three points away from whoever has it. Um, And so there's that little aspect of it. And then there's the other aspect where you're working towards 16 points, but you also need to have one of every gem in the game. And the only way to get the green gem is to take... Gauntlet. For the gauntlet, yeah. The only way to get the green gem is to take one of the higher, harder card gem cards. Three. Level three cards. So, uh, yeah, they just make you work a little bit harder to get all the things. And uh, But it plays just like Splendor. You get cards that helps boost your production, and it's really nice. And it's beautiful. I love all the colors. <laughs> so I was, at, I was late to the Splendor train. Um, so I have played Splendor before, but... You know, it was after it had already been out for a number of months. Mm. So, and then I played the Splendor Duel and loved it. Splendor Duel's good, yeah. yeah so really super. Cool. That was on our January list, I think. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but they did a really good job with this, I think. Yeah. Pretty so nice. definitely worth checking out. Um, this Marvel Splendor from Space Cowboys. Oh yeah, Space Cowboys. My number nine mm-hmm. is uh, another game I had not heard of till it showed up on your review couch. Yeah. And it is Thera from L4 Studios and Mr. B Games. So in Thera, uh, basically, uh, that is, Thera is built on uh, what is now, um, what is the game with the uh, Santorini? Mm. It's not built on present um, current day Santorini. Um, anyway, a big volcano exploded, left ash everywhere. So in this game, you've got little ash tokens everywhere. And uh, you're basically mining up rock and clearing off ash and moving all of your uh, wood and rock resources onto different spaces and then building new things like maybe you're building another quarry or you're building some sort of a way to get uh, lumber or some sort of resource uh, and that will uh, continue on. So you are, or maybe a fountain or whatever, you're going to need water to to, uh, clean up some of the ash or to make some of the other things. So uh, water is actually a precious resource in this game trying to transport them to places on your map and uh, whoever does the best job of placing all the buildings and cleaning up the ash is going to likely get the most points and win the game. And this is like a really small little map area of Thera. What is it? A four by three, four by four grid. It's four by three. No, it's three. It's really small. Um, But you're trying to just try and optimize this as best as possible. Now, what makes this game different? Well, you've got this rondelle, which uses a Mancala style mechanic, where if I take an action, uh, much like San Juan, I'm going to get the primary action with the benefit. Everyone else is going to also get the normal benefit. You're going to get an additional benefit based on the number of stones that are in on 
that are on that space. And then you're going to take the stones, man call style, and go doop, 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 putting them on all of the other actions going around the circle. Um, and then you're just going to go back and forth like that or around the table, um, selecting an action that has not previously been selected. Mm -hmm. um, because if I take the priestess action, you can take any action except the priestess action, moving the action token around wherever you want to take the action. So a little bit different rules for two players, uh, but it's super cool. Uh, somebody says, Rondell Mancala, yes, please. Oh, that's Brie. Absolutely um, love games like that. Yep, we found and, that one in the BGG store for those looking for it. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, be sure to check out Thera from L4 and Mr. B. I barely missed your list as well, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, my number nine was Point City. Which barely missed my list. No, you were debating. On I was one. having a really hard time. Uh, this is a super cute game. If you've played Point Salad, it has the same kind of artwork, but it is a super little... bright color. It, I love that. I love, love it. it. Um, it's more involved than Point Salad uh, because you're drafting these cards, but these cards are resources that you'll later use to build buildings. Um, and then it kind of works actually in a Splendor-esque kind of way where you're collecting these buildings to give you resources for later use for other buildings. And as you go through the deck, you'll get uh, harder to accomplish buildings, So, but they're worth more points. And so you're just trying to collect points. And everybody has an equal number of turns in this. Um, so I, I do like it a little bit more than Splendor just because of that reasoning. Uh, but I would say they're probably on similar playing fields um, as far as game play goes. So if you do like Splendor, you'll probably like this one. Um, and then the cards, you know, you don't know what you're going to get because they, they're double sided. So um, <laughs> it's it's interesting how the cards get replaced in the center of the board, because if I take a resource card, it's going to get replaced with a building. And then, you know, you could maybe flip over one of the resources cards to get a building on the back it, and so you don't know what you're going to get, but maybe it will help you. Maybe it won't help you. Or if you build a building, which you can't just take unless you can afford it. Mm. If you build a building, then it's going to pop up. On, the replacement is going to be a resource. Mm -hmm. So the risk of taking a resource is that, hey, you're going to give me a building that I might get to build on my turn. Yep. But it's nice. It's a nice balancing act, and you're just trying to get the most points. Yeah. It's cute. Uh, I think my number one knock against Point City mm -hmm. is that when I'm building a bank or an amusement park or whatever it is, it doesn't feel like you are building a bank or an amusement park or whatever it is. You're getting some random Splendor type of bonus where what one discount for purple or one discount for orange and some number of victory points from zero to seven. And it's, so it's not as thematic as you want it to be. Is what and I am, I'm big on theme and connectivity. That said, I mean, I, if you enjoy, um, you know, drafting cards from a, from a grid and resource gathering and management, uh, I think you can't go wrong with it. So, and like I said, it, it was right there on the border, and I was having a really tough time whether to put it in there or not. Um, but I wanted to make sure uh, that uh, the games that we put on that I did put on there got represented, but it was right there on the line. Yeah. So uh, I do cool. actually recommend it. Yeah, it's still worth checking out for sure. Absolutely. Point City by AEG and Flat Out. Nice. My number eight. Again, barely missed your list. We don't have a lot of crossover down here at the bottom. Nope. Is Dice Manor yep. from Arcane Wonders. So in Dice Manor, you are uh, rolling dice and placing them either uh, on an area to draft the, the manor tile uh, of some sort of room, uh, whether it be a bedroom or a dining room or a library or what, what have you. Um, either there or you're going to place it on the advertising spot, which you are advertising your fantastic manner. Or if there's not, if you can do neither of those actions, then you could do a pre walkthrough of the portion of the, of the manner that you have currently built. The thing is the dice that you place 
have to match the di the numbers on the rooms. And you have to start at your entry and move on from there in a sort of a, a connected path. Because you can't just teleport from the entrance to wherever you're going to go in like the back bedroom. You have to walk all the way through. Here's the thing. You're going to place these dice Vegas style. So if I roll uh, six dice and three of them are threes and four of them uh, or uh, two of them are twos and one of them is a one, I have to choose the three threes or the two twos or the one one. I can't take parts of them. I have to take the whole batch of whatever number I roll. And then next turn, I'm going to roll more dice later. Um, so if I have three threes, I can bid on the three room or I can put all three dice into advertising. The more dice you have, the more chance that you will have to uh, maybe unlock more dice or get tons of victory points. So, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, you uh, played it, and but you did not make your top 10. Um, I think you said you, you like the game, but something it feels like it's missing for you. Yeah. So, and that's a fair statement. Yeah, I just, I think it needed something else. I don't know what. Maybe hidden player goals, maybe something else oh, to shoot nice. for. Hey, expansion time. Right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Robert, get on some expansions on this thing. So, um, definitely something uh, worth checking out. Uh, if you like dice uh, chucking and, uh, and if you like the Vegas style mechanic. I don't think this fires Vegas. Uh, I think it does things uh, differently with the placement of all of the tiles in the manor. Be sure to check out Dice Manor from Arcane Wonders. Yep. Hello, Panic. Hello, Jenna. Um, okay. My number eight is Vienna. Vienna Ways. Yeah. From the Queen Games City Collection. Yep. They have been doing a lot of these where they're either uh, redoing already named games or they are renaming games that have previously uh, been made. Yeah, so this one's the remake of La Isla, and um, it's it's a much bigger game than La Isla. It is, if you've played La Isla, it's a little tiny uh, box, and uh, the gameplay was super fast, so they've added a whole bunch of uh, stuff. Uh, but it's I can see the connection between the two, but it still feels very different. Um, I really like the theme of this where you're kind of like a, a spy going around collecting like resources and you're you're basically doing your own thing. There's a little interaction on the board on like if you're playing with more people, I could see it being a little bit more like. Let me grab that before they can grab that kind of thing. Because you have to surround these tokens. You have to fully surround them in you order to be to in three connected, all three connected cities to right. get the thing right in the middle right. of those three cities. Um, but I, I actually really like this one, and we we played in prototype form uh, this past weekend, and um, yeah, I thought it stood out. It was nice. Yep, I agree completely. I like the multi-use cards. You can so you're getting these hand of cards and you're choosing where to place them. And so one's going to be used for this, one's going to be used for that, one's going to be used for that. But you have to figure out which one's going to be used for what. As game. a designer of a game of multi-use cards, I really like <laughs> multi-use cards. So he really um, likes multi-use cards, <laughs> for sure. It's likely that I like this game. Yeah, so I think. <laughs> I think um, I think that will do pretty well for them when that comes out. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think people will like this more than La Isla. I think so, too. But you haven't played, haven't played La Isla. But, I, I, but I, that's what I have heard from everyone who has played La Isla and then has played this. So some of the games in the City Collection, they did not have many changes. I think, did you say this one has the most changes? Yeah, he said, well, that's what Travis that's said. That's what Travis me. said, okay. It's been a long time since I played Liza, so I can't exactly tell you all the differences because it's, like I said, it's been years since it first came out, so it's been a minute. Um, This is the second one of the City series I've lived in. It says Dan. <laughs> How about it? Nice. <laughs> so He hasn't lived in La Isla. No. He is living in Vienna. Okay. It's, yeah, because Liz is not in the city collection. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my number eight. That box is far prettier than the box that we played. 
Box oh, we played said yeah. Vienna, not for <laughs> yeah. not for sale. It's a black. All of the prototype boxes are black and yellow. Every so one actually, of the-, <laughs> the deluxe edition of the kick of the city collection is all black. Really? Yeah. Did not know that. Yeah. Th- this is so pretty. I mean, I agree. So anyway, <laughs> Vienna from Queen Games. Yes. You are number seven. My number seven is going to be relatively quick because it is Splendor Marvel. So uh, I really en- I enjoy the different victory condition that this has over Splendor where, Splendor, where you're trying to get one of each of the colors and then also getting uh, 16 points in order to grab that in- the Infinity Gauntlet. And uh, so we were playing with our family plays games yes. uh, with Mick and Starla. And uh, Mick was the first to get <laughs> the three Avengers symbols for the longest road sort of bonus. It's the Avengers bonus. And so he said he, he, he was teasing. He was like, like, what is he doing? He was like, hey, Starla. Hey, check this out. And then he plays the Avengers theme and grabs the token. And it was hilarious. And then. That's so funny. And then. And then Starla puts her fourth one out and said, "Hey Mick, hey." And then I, and and I give me that phone. I, this game. And so I pull out the I pull out the phone. I play it for Starla, and but that like, was Dude. but that then no he he had to do that to me. Why are you doing me like that? You guys know Mick. He's great. Um. So then I got. The fifth Avenger symbol, all of a sudden, it was what my fifth and sixth because there were two of them on there, and I had it already queued up <laughs> and I played it. And it's good because it stopped her from winning, like it it barely stopped her from I winning. Know, she ended up winning, she still ended up winning, but it, it did. A while. I was it so slowed her down. Purple card, I would have had it. It slowed her down, and I was one turn away from winning as well. So that's how tight it can be. Uh, so it really worked out. I have a feeling Mick and Starla also really like, because they're Splendor. I think they're Splendor fans. They are, yeah. So, I know Starla really likes Splendor. So. Um, and they love Splendor Duel. Yeah. Um, so now we have yet another option, Splendor Marvel. It's nice. I like it. I thought y'all would like that story. Yeah. All right. Um, my number seven is Joan of Arc, an Orleans drawn right game. And oh. From Capstone and DLP. Yeah, it's 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 a play on words because you're actually drawing tokens from a bag, not just drawing. You're not just drawing, but drawing. you are drawing. You're drawing, drawing but not, yeah. So I thought that's clever. Uh, I think for those who know Orleans, this will be a this will go over better. I think if you don't know Orleans, it's kind of hard to see the symbols if you don't know the symbols, the colors. So it's the colors blend it's, too. It's much. kind of muddy. It is um, muddy for the for the paper. Uh, so I think that will be the biggest hurdle to overcome for new players. But like like I said, if you are familiar with Orleans and you kind of know what to look for, it will you'll fall into place really. So the red, white, and blue really stand out. But then you've got brown and gray and. What's the other one? There's six. I mean, there's red and black and black, black, brown, and gray that are all the same kind sort of tones. Muddy t- and it's not and like it's a sweet. medium brown. It's a dark muddy brown and yeah. a dark muddy gray. So anyway, besides anyway. besides that, I for me it doesn't bother me because I know the game and I can understand what what everything is doing so you're using these discs well you pull out a number of discs and you're drafting discs and the the discs that you draft are these little people that will end up doing things you can you can make roads uh, trade routes you can make um, your little trading posts you can gather money and get buildings that gives you uh, cool powers uh, so it's all very Orleans esque you can you can grab goods but the goods don't do anything they're gonna get you points and you unlock bonuses there's a lot of things to unlock and a lot of bonuses to grab um and you still have the development track and so that will be multipliers for your um the trading posts that you have so there's a lot of good things that are that are happening in this game and it's all in a very short time span if you're playing again if you're playing with people who kind of know the concepts it will go pretty quickly um, our first game was kind of long because we, we, we played with two people who didn't know the concepts. Uh, 
But then I played it again, two player with Jonathan. I taught him and the game was like 30 minutes because he understood. He's like, oh, this. OK, it made sense. So it's just a matter of uh, play styles. And yeah, but for me, I really, I really enjoyed this. And um, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. And you kick butt at this. I clearly don't know how to play this game. But I want to learn how to play it better because uh, it's it's a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Um, A lot of people say, oh, they really missed the boat with not having bag building. But I don't think it needs it. I think it. Yeah, I don't think it needs it either. I, I like the drafting person. Because you're still drafting five at a time from a bag, and you're eventually going to get all of it. But it's as if your bag were taking a snapshot at this moment, and yeah. you've got just this in it. And at the start, you're removing two two tokens anyway. Right. I, I really like how that goes. So. I think it's pretty smooth. Yeah. So I definitely recommend it. Yep. I liked it a lot. A lot of different things going on, building the uh, outposts and the roads and the water paths. So I think it really uh, works quite well. That's Joan of Arc, Orlean Drillin Wright from Capstone and DLP. Yep. Your number seven. Yep. My number six is another AEG and flat out game. And this one did make my list. It is Deep Dive. Now we played this with uh, uh, y'all in the chat um, and hopefully we all had a lot of fun with it. I too had fun. Um, where you are trying to dive down to get uh, uh, different uh, treasures. As the further down you go, the better fish that you are going to collect. And you're trying to get, uh, you're trying to collect sets of them. I think red, yellow, and green, I think it is. Yeah. And um, if you can get a set, they're going to be worth full points. If you get a partial set, it's going to be worth half points. Um, but don't get eaten. By the whales and the sharks and all of the other things. Um, so um, that was a whole lot of fun when uh, when we played it. Uh, I think it it does a lot of things that Deep Sea Adventure does, but I think this does it this much better. Because um, you don't have to worry about going back up. I mean, it's it's more forgiving. It's more forgiving. Um, now that's not to say that it's I dislike deep sea, deep sea Adventure. There's a, there's a, I think there is a lot. Deep Sea Adventure, I think, is a lot chunkier, um, a lot, a lot crunchier with with having having those decisions. Should I come up now or should I keep going? Because if you're a great keep role, robbing treasure yeah, and struggling to get up, yeah. or should I dump some on the side? Uh, um, and so that's that's a different sort of tough choice. Yes. With this choice, it's how Actually Scott said. Yes. <laughs> His set's like a ginormous like fish tank. It's huge. That's fantastic. With like big huge. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So it's pretty great. So yeah, and Matt says uh, every time Steph was denied an opportunity to get that one type of fish, it was fantastic to watch on the stream. So yes, and Steph loves. Pushing your luck. If you I, pushing your luck, I do, you're right. going to enjoy deep dive. I totally like because it. Because you yeah. can stop and take what's in front of you or go down one yeah. more depth <laughs> where there are more predators. But the treasures are a lot more expensive. So uh, there there are yeah, a lot of chances. there are a lot of good, interesting decisions to be made in deep dive. So there you have it. Yeah. Deep dive from I think you will like it, Scott. AEG and flat out for sure. Yep. Um, My number... <laughs> What are we at? Six. I have not played. You have not played it yet. So it won't show up on my list, but we no. have it. Yep. We actually have a signed copy of this. Bot Factory. Bot, Bot Factory. Factor B. Uh, so basically, if you like games like Kanban, this is like a small Kanban. So here's the thing with the, with these new games coming out from uh, Vital Lacerda, uh, who we get to spend the weekend with. Yeah, it and was he super is fun. He is a fantastic guy. Yeah, he, he is fantastic. Um, very humble, uh, very humorous. Um, we were playing Furnace. He was walking past and said, "No, that's not for me." We're like, it's "Too Why? hard. It's too hard. It's too hard and too chaotic." I'm like, "No, it's you can handle this. Have you not played your games?" Um, <laughs> So there's a lot of these Lacerda games that are coming out that are like bite size, his bigger it, titles. I, w- I don't want to say a junior version, maybe it's a light. A 
It's a lighter version of each of these where they don't have quite so many decisions and right. quite so large and quite so time consuming. Right. It's like a bite, like you said, a bite sized chunk. Yeah, it is. So this is the bite size Kanban. Yeah, because you are using your worker uh, to go into a location and then you activate all the workers from location to location. So it's just like Kanban where you're going through each time in a certain way. But when you move, you have to go to a new board and do the thing. So what you're trying to do is collect robot pieces, mm -hmm. get robot blueprints, put the robots together, try and collect robot like prototypes or whatever. And so you're you're doing these four different things in the different areas and you're um and so you're just trying to get points from the different ways to get points. Uh so finishing off robots, you know, having those in, in hand at the end of the game, fulfilling contracts, having those at the end of the game. Uh so it all just plays out really smoothly and you you try and get those little combo bonuses whenever possible because there are combos to be had. And you also have to look out for, um, oh, what's her name in Kanban? Susan or uh, what's her name? So I've not played Kanban before. But it's on my list to play, and I've read the rules. What is her name? Sandra. She's the, Sandra. Sandra. She's the Sandra. one who does all of your... Yeah, she. So she's moving around the board and blocking locations, making it more difficult to do. She's things. the manager inspector. Yeah, and she's or whatever she is. out the different areas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, uh, she's doing her job, and uh, yeah, I think it's just I think it's a nice little like one hour game. So you're, you and with easier rules than Kanban. So if you, it's the same taste. Yeah, it's definitely the same taste, and so that's what's really nice about it. For those who don't like. Lacerda games, because they're too long or in-depth, they will probably be happy with games like this coming up. Um, so I think it's pretty pretty smart of them to do. Yep. Now, we also played, not in March, but in April, we played House of Fado. Yeah. Which so, is like a... We should talk about that next time. <laughs> which is like a streamlined version of The Gallerist. Yep. It's faster, and it has similar... Um, a similar feel, but very different because right. different theme, different things you're doing. Totally different theme. Yeah. So and different, totally different things you're doing. This is hopefully coming soon. I don't know. I didn't so just in case we don't talk about it, I mean, we clearly we I we, really we don't it. have a review copy yet because it's not out. We it's were playing even, a yeah. Now we were playing a super no. a super early prototype yeah. version of it. It was cool though. Um, it was wicked cool. But it it is super cool. Uh, like I said, not played Bot Factory, um, but yeah, when we got if I played it in March, it would have made my March list. <laughs> so there's and we did. She said, mm, "Should I cheat on this list and move my April games into March?" And no, you should I not do that. Wanted you to. wanted to, but I did not do it. So yeah, super cool. You'll like this one when when we play it. So just in case we don't talk about House of Fado, it is another one of those um, bite-sized games. Be looking for more of those from Lacerda in the future, I think. I think so. I think it's a smart plan. Yes. So we are on... Your number five. My number five, which is Joan of Arc, Orleans Roll and Write. Uh, draw, uh, drawing right, rather, from Capstone and DLC. Um, yeah. I already mentioned, I don't know how to play this game. I am terrible <laughs> at it. I tried going after a strategy that I saw Steph do, and she went after a different strategy and destroyed my face. And uh, I don't know, you just seem to know the strategies on this because the both games that we played, you're like... Uh, not just one step ahead of me. You're like two or three steps ahead of me. Yet it ranked higher on my list than it did on than mostly because I played a list. few extra games than you did. And it and it made the difference because Bot Factory is one of them, and another one is a Coming game, up, yeah. uh, a game that uh, was from PGA, PGA, and another one was barely off my list. It was the last game that was that barely fell off the bottom side of my list. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Joan of Arc, Orleans, draw and write. I want to learn how to play this better, but I fear I'm just going to just be just slightly behind you each time. And whoever finishes certain things first locks everybody else out. So that is 
it, you know, if you've got that edge and you exploit that edge, then uh, it's going to be a rough time. But the game is else. quick. Once you know it, it's quick and then it's yeah, quick. Do it again. Yeah. Play it again. Figure I it out. That there's different buildings and stuff every game. I mean, I, I like the game quite a bit. So. Yes, I do too. I was surprised it was as high it was for you, so I'm glad you did like it. Yeah, absolutely. Um. All right, that was your number five. Your number five is? My number five is Terminate. Hey, we just played this. Hey. The stream. How about it? It made your number five. That's good. Yeah. I, I really, I like it, but I like it better with two and three players. Oh, yeah. It, it, matter of fact, I liked it so much better with two players, it might have gone up on my list. It's true. It's true. Um, I, I think there's a lot going on in this, and I think there's a lot of different strategies to pursue, and I really like what it's doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it will work for a lot of different people. I'm usually not one for root building, but I do like this because it's more puzzly than root building and it's not pick up and deliver. It's you're trying to hit the different areas to get points and you're trying to get developments in play to get points. And so you're just trying to make it all work. And I really enjoy trying to make it work, <laughs> trying to plan ahead what I need to do, how much money will I need? But again, it's an opportunity game where if you see something that's cheap, you might not need it now, but getting it now is better because the opportunity is there and you can get it. You got room in your warehouse. But that's the hard. That's you know hard. I mean, if I should have told the inside out games when we had them on stream, I think they need to have an upgrade for a warehouse upgrade. Let's see. That would be four more cubes. I would, I would, I, I would think about I picking think, it up. I would get it. Hundo P. Hundo P. <laughs> um, yeah. So. It's, it's really cool. I liked it quite a bit. So I'm glad I've got to play it three times already. And three times in a week. That's a lot. It's a fair bit. Yep. Eggman says, I got to demo this at a con a few weeks ago. Really like the Rondell. Absolutely. So yep. definitely. And, you know, we talked about that as we just played it here a few minutes ago. We just ago. played it on stream. Yeah. Just played it on stream. And if you missed it, go check out our videos on demand on YouTube. And you will be able to see it there. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed Terminus, uh, so definitely one to check out. On Kickstarter, uh, yeah. Just hit Kickstarter yesterday and yep. already funded yep. and already hit unlocking stretch goals. So yep. you still you have that link still, right? I do. Don't wait because it's going to be too late. Back in Go now. ahead and back it now. All right. That was my number five. Your number four is? Number four is a game that really came out of nowhere. Oh, you need to get the channel points, everybody. Um, oh, yeah, I do. We, um, Bree says, hold on, should I wait for what? Oh, yeah. You should still wait. Um, it's a game that came out of nowhere for me. And uh, actually, we played uh, Prolix. Did we, we played it before Wordsy, right? Yeah, we played Prolix first. And then I'm like, uh, no, no. Another game from Hold the up. same designer. Yeah. Um, And so Steph is like, I've played this before. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I've played this. And, and she went to the shelf and got it. And we played. Then we went ahead and played that one. And ta-da, it was even better. Um, I knew it would be <laughs> wordsy, and we play. And we did actually end up playing this with the stream. It was so um, fun. So, word games are really hit and miss with me. If if it is boring or blah, it's not going to rate very highly. If it is uh, solid, it's going to go straight up to the top with me because this might be the best word game there is. I would have to agree with that because this does not it it rewards players who see patterns in words but it does not penalize you with putting out a bunch of crap tiles or crap cards out there that nope this is what you've got and you're stuck with it like scrabble does for example i mean classic game scrabble here are your seven tiles make your word from this stuff and with wordsy you can make any word you want. <laughs> Scott says But you're old. only going to score with these eight cards. And I love that. Because you're not penal. Oh, I don't have a... I, I don't have an R in here. I can't make this word that I've thought of. Doesn't matter. In wordsy, you can make the word. And Whatever you're just you not going to score for the R. No big deal. 
And so it, I love that about this game. But like the fact that Scott says it's the only word game I'm happy to play. That's, and that's a lot. And I, that's like, like a, a ton. So I'm usually good at word games. I know Dan is really good at word games. Dan matter of fact, super good at word matter games. of fact, Steph loves it when she can beat Dan at uh, at at the daily wordle every day. Like, She's like, I got it in. Oh, I did it in three. How did Dan do? Oh, he got it in, she got it, he got it in two. And she's mad because Dan gets it one round earlier every than time. she does. Every time. Um, <laughs> and so um, this game, I think, uh, it evens the playing field a little bit. But still, a player like Dan can end up still using his skills to great advantage on a game like this. Because yeah. if you can see those patterns going on, then you can still try to score with all eight cards. Yeah. Um, anyway, I love this game. I will always keep this game. Wordsy from Formal Ferret. Super good. Super good. Oh, did I not do this? Um, nope, I did not. My number... Yeah, Matt says, I have a fantastic vocabulary and that helps in games like Wordsy. Scrabble, by comparison, is so tile-limited and it comes down to making obscure words in the Scrabble Dictionary and knowing all the little bitty two-letter words that will score you this way and that way. Yeah, I just so, didn't bleh. know all the two-letter words because I played that one. But, I mean, how does that really help? And I, And is that fun? It was for me. I mean, okay, so it's good to start with. But there are better word games out there, and Wordle is indeed one of them. Wordsy? Uh, uh, Wordle. Wordsy is indeed okay. one of them. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, also, speaking of word games, the word game that Lucky Duck is coming out with. Um, super good. The Scratch. What? What's this? What, what game is that? The, the Scratch Off. The, the Scratch Off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Once Upon a Line. Once Upon a Line. Yeah. Another word game. Fantastic. Can't wait for that. Thank you, Bree. You know what I'm talking about. That you really need to know words with that one, though. That's more of like an adventure puzzle. Like, oh, it's got it. You have to use logic, which I like. You have to use logic, but that's what makes it different. Yeah, it's really good. Yes, it's really good. For sure. I love it. Still a word game. Anyway. Yes. Scratch lottery, the board lottery scratch ticket game. (laughs) For sure. Uh, okay, my number four. Your number four. I don't know how to say this. Zephyria. Zephyria. From Play a Game Edizioni. Whoever heard of this? Nobody. Nobody. Uh, it's on BGA. That's how I heard of it. Um, Dan and, and I. Age number four. Uh, Dan amuses me by playing a lot of weird games on BGA that show up. But I'm like, let's. Amuses you. Amuses you. He amuses me. She has heard of it. We has heard of it. LMAO. Uh, so. Super puzzly. It's cooperative. So Dan didn't love it, but I loved it. Where you get these random puzzles, like tiles out here, and you're trying to get them in number order from one to whatever. And uh, you have to use your special powers to do this. And you only have so many rounds, and you have only so many um, uh, actions you can do on your turn. So you're really limited on what you can do and by the powers you have to move these things around the board you have to work together it's puzzly it's fun i i like this kind of figuring out the puzzle aspect of it so oh brie is uh spilling the tea up in the chat a little bit <laughs> she has heard of it <laughs> um, i think it's worth playing it's on board game arena you can check it out and if it's something you like well maybe you'd license it uh i think it's beautiful um I've not played it. No, I'm not. It won't be for everybody because it is it is co-op, right? So you are working together to try and make it all happen. Like if you can get this over here, then I can make sure it gets to where it needs to be. That kind of cooperation you need to talk about and find out, figure it out. Um, so I thought it was clever. I can't believe I turned you to the light side. I like puzzles. You like, I like co-ops try, now. I like, I like trying things. You like co-ops now, though. I do. I've liked co-ops for a while. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, I turned both you and James Whatever. to the co-op side. My number three is a game that um, we played so long ago, maybe 30 minutes ago. It's Terminus. So, uh, from Inside Out Games, this actually rose... Two spots on my rankings because of playing it two-player. 
I thought um, it would actually. After four player, I'm like, man, this is a little cutthroat, and uh, I wasn't I wasn't sure about where to place this i saw the the goodness in it with all of the crunchy rondelle actions but i was like man i hope i hope this isn't that cutthroat at two players it's not as cutthroat in two players i hear five players is a cyclone <laughs> um so um and i think it's it's completely different at all at uh, different player counts so um definitely worth checking out uh, as Steph said, the the all of the if you like if you like Rondell action selection, it's fantastic. If you like um, resource collection, it's fantastic. If you love upgrades, it's fantastic. If you uh, love um, you know building buildings that give you certain uh, player powers, that's great. If uh, you love end game scoring goals, then that's great. So. This, this all the is things. all of that together. Yes. Go ahead and get Terminus on Kickstarter now. Do it. Do it. My number three was probably a surprise to you. It was probably a surprise to many it people. It was a surprise. It is another game you played at Adam. It is called uh, Nakojima, which I think is also on Kickstarter right now. I haven't looked at it. From though. Unfriendly Games, which I got to say. Not a great publisher. Not a great name. company name. <laughs> that said, Greg, <laughs> that said, I saw this played like three times at Adam. And because it's easy, it's a dexterity game. A lot, of, I think dexterity games kind of get a bad rap in a way. I think people yeah. don't really consider them like real games. They are, but they are. And this one is 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 hard. It's super hard, um, and it's different though. So that's why it got such a high rating because you have these poles that are connected with a wire which represent like telephone poles um and you're you're trying to place these poles in certain regions um but eventually the regions are going to get filled up or you can't do it without touching another wire because you can't touch other wires or other poles so you're gonna have to put on top of poles a colored string on the other side of the pole blue is longest pink is shortest so you have to manage these poles and you might have to stack poles on poles in order to make it happen. There's also this cat feature that you might have to place a cat on a wire and like not make things fall over. And it just, it it's a tough dexterity game, but it's super cool and it looks really cool and the pieces are cool. I, I I'm just excited to see the actual product at the end, but I, I was impressed. I'm a wizard at pulling out black cubes. I mean, come on, though. Every time you get a black cube, you hand it to somebody, and they have to put a cat on one of the wires. And that cat cannot touch any other wire except the one you're hanging it from. Right. I literally, I said, I'm going to pull a black cube. I pulled Uh it and handed it off to Emily. And then I pulled another one, handed it to you. And uh, I was literally just... And them out like candy. I know. The one uh, knock I've got against this game. I love the gameplay. Uh I I think it's it's really cool to have the the wires be not flimsy enough to just hang, but enough to they're like thick, thick rope type things that you can actually have them bend and weave. Yeah. And you can like make so that all's good. You can maneuver it a little bit. Yes. I agree. The one thing that knocks it down and was and it was almost on my list. The one thing that knocked it down for me was that there is one loser. And everyone else is a winner. But if you're playing in eight player games and have seven winners and one loser. Eh. I understand what you're saying, but you can't like set it back up. Right. You, like You can. You can't like. I what, mean, you just keep playing. I mean, no, no, no. You I'm just saying, you set it back up and play again, but one loser. It's just. What are you supposed to do, though? Like, what, I don't know. What's I don't, your answer? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's I don't loser. know. I don't know the answer. Yeah. And it doesn't play that many people. It plays like, what, four? I don't know. Yeah. But, and just saying, three winners and a loser, it just. Anyway, it's a really cool idea. And so. You always lose cockroach it, poker. If you if you if you like dexterity games, certainly worth checking. Oh yeah, if you like dexterity games, easy. It's, it's so cool. It's super cool. 
All right. Well. Oh yeah, cockroach poker was the was is one with one loser, and so yeah. Hey, we're on number two. We have the same number two. What? I know. And you know who also wants to know about this number two? Yeah. Someone might want to know about this number two. Free. What? What? Our number two. Number two. Namalia. Namalia. Boop, boop. We're twins. I know that you picked it after you saw my list. So No, I did not. Yep. N no, I did not see your list. I intentionally did not look at your uh -huh. list. I intentionally did not look at your list when I made my list. My. <laughs> uh, we just played this on stream. I love it. I think it's pretty great. You draft cards. You make a, a like a zoo of animals. A, and you're trying to meet these goal requirements that are changing every turn uh, in, in a cartographer's-esque kind of way. Um, and so it's just you're, you're, you need to focus on what's coming up, on what you're doing, on, and so you can get the most points possible each round. And yeah, the cartographer's I, scoring, but better than cartographers, it really gets me. And then top and, placement on top of that, there's been a lot of games that have come out recently where – Oh, you've got a card. You put it on the table. This is now your field. You get another card. You have to put it on top of that, overlapping in some way. Games have done that before. This has that really nice cartography. Scoring mechanic. Scoring mechanic. With a ton of different scoring cards in the box that will change up every play. And you have to pivot what you're going to do because you're really tight on a six by six grid. Every card is a two by two grid by itself. Yeah. So... Um, I just I really like what they did with this. Um, it plays super quick. Um, all of this. It's just really nice. It's nice. All in a small box. All in a yes. Look at this. Look how small this box is. It's perfect. It's literally I mean, it's, hand size, it's right? Perfect. It's a it's it's great. I love it very much. Um, so um small box size. Small production cost, right? Yep. And affordable for everybody else. So be sure to grab Namalia from Lucky Duck Games and no uh, La Boite de Jou. Yes. Do it. Small box, big game. That's right, Bree. 20 MSRP. Come on, 20 bucks. Boom. 20 bucks MSRP, and that's MSRP. Yeah. It's, it's so good. Yeah. So it could be found even less than $20. Just got to look around for it totally worth every bit of it totally totally do it uh hey it's time for number ones going back through my top 10 we have dog park thera dice manor splendor marvel deep dive joan of arc orleans roll and write wordsy terminus Nimalia, and my number one is a game we've already talked about vienna from queen games um Going out and catching the spies. You know, it thematically, it doesn't really feel like going and catching the spies. It does feel like grabbing the different resources and whatnot. But the thing that really stands out for me is you've got a hand of cards and you're doing multi-use card stuff. Um, and you must take your three cards and use them all, even if you don't want to. So this one is going to be used for uh, for collecting a token. Uh, a token. And this is going to be used for advancing the windows. Advancing the windows, and this is going to be used for something to say. Uh, it's you're going to use all three of them: one for the ability, one for the yeah, token yeah. that you get, and one for the window that slides up. Like yeah, so there's one which is ability. You think, oh, that's going to be the most important card. However, you don't want to move certain windows. Like if he's going to get a benefit for it, so it's like, well, maybe do that I, and i really need this resource so maybe you focus on getting the resource in the mm -hmm. window and then you're left over with the agony so cut. i was collecting all of the red guns yeah. so it is to my benefit to push the red gun so that it's yeah. not worth one point per gun it's worth two points per gun or three points yeah. per gun or four points per gun and i've got to keep pushing that forward yeah what if i don't even draw those well, I found a special ability yeah. that allowed me, uh, every time I push the gun forward, it's two more points. Yes. so It's definitely uh, a combo-y game. And you then, can get the cool combos. Right. It's good. And then I found one. Hey, 
when you push the blue door forward, you can decide to push a Something different else. color door instead. Uh, I'm like, oh, hey, how about it's... red doors? <laughs> Here's the other catch. You've only got three spots to put special abilities. Those special abilities always fire, but you always have to trade one of them out. You can't keep the three in front of you. You have to get rid of one and put another one on. But wait, you can upgrade your desk, your little spy desk, to have a fourth slot. But that is going to cost you. You can also upgrade uh, your desk to have other certain abilities on them, which might give you... Um, what are some of those abilities? They give you... Um, I'm, I'm actually drawing a blank right now. The abilities... Uh, you get There's a rebate. There's like four different abilities that you that you can add. And it's also, the more of those that you get, you're going to get bonus points at the end of the game. There are a lot. So that's also super cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's one of them that gives you uh, an extra card. There's one of them that gives you... There's all sorts we of... We got the extra card early in first because yeah. we're like, we need more... We need to be able to get your card. Yeah, so we um, need more choices. But yeah, there are four of those different abilities that you can add to your desk. Um it's it's super cool. Um, on your turn, whenever you uh, place an agent, you can either take a mission or fulfill a mission. Um, if you are placing in a... The, the cities all have flags on them, either uh, Soviet Union, yeah. U.S., Britain, France... Something else. And something else. Yeah. Was it Germany? I think I can't remember. Anyway, what I don't think it was Germany. No, no it was Austria, Vienna, um, Austria, and so obviously. obviously. Um, and so if I put one of my uh, spies on Austria, I could take an Austria mission, or I can fulfill one or more Austria missions. I love all of that. Um, it's because. Amazing. You need to plan. You ha you have to surround those tokens in order, as I mentioned before, to get them. Maybe you get a bonus if you go in Austria. Maybe you don't. Maybe you've got a mission for this. Maybe you don't. Maybe I want to keep this mission from you, so I run to this U.S. place and grab the U.S. mission because I know you're about to grab it. Yep. Um, so much goodness in this game. Totally deserves my number one spot. Vienna yeah. by Queen Games. Your number ten. Go through your rundown. Uh, my rundown. Splendor Marvel. Um, and then number nine, Point City, and then number eight, Vienna, and then number seven, Joan of Arc, Orleans, Draw and Write, number six, Bot Factory, number five, Terminus, number four, Zephyria, number three, Nekojima, number two, Nimalia, and number one, Deep Dive. <laughs> you are the push your luck queen. I just have so much fun with this. Yes. It, it's hard not to love this game. I mean, I I just like it. I think... I is, think it, it, is it deep? It's so deep. It's not, it's not that deep. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's light. It's light, but it's deeper than it would you would think. Agree. There's a little bit more to it. Like, you could pick up a run. It's a little bit of strategy. Like or, you know, you could... You want to get eaten on the first level by the predators because then you could skip Yeah, that. why do you want to get eaten? Because... It you can skip you that track. entire level every time after that yeah. until you get three otters eaten and then you have to burn. I think it's just fun to see what you get. I just there this is the this is a fun game for me. And uh you know, I was I was expecting Point City to be the one higher uh, of the two. It was two. But having played Deep Dive, it's it's more my jam. I just I just like it. I and they're both higher on our list than yeah. than, than Point City. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, I love Point Salad, as you know, as they should. I mean, it's a fun game. And they're all looking for Point City, but don't let this go under your radar. They are penguins, yes, not otters. I thought they were oh, they <laughs> were penguins. That you're right, they are. But like like you said They're otters in the Malia. <laughs> to deep sea adventure, even though they are different, but they're they're the same. I you're, deep, you're diving down, mm -hmm. and I rate them both fairly high. Like I I think they are a lot of fun. I don't think one fires the other. I don't either because they're that different. They are, and so. uh, it's just it's just a fun game that I would like to play more of. So you know, but you want a number one. Games aren't like long or heavy games, but they're just. They are 
fun for me. They and hit the right spot. For yeah, me. and so that therefore they they get rated a little bit higher. But you know, it was a tight month, and they all fall around the same rating in my rating scale. It's just a matter of what do I think is a little bit more my jam. So it was a solid month, though. I mean. Uh, I expect April is going to be a much harder decision much because month. we are going to play a lot more <laughs> coming up in April. But uh, for March, I, I had a good month. Despite the the lack of games we played, the the top ten still yep. were worthy oh, yeah, of the sure. name and uh, rose to the top. Absolutely. Uh, so good month. We'll be back next month with our top of April, which, again, is already a difficult. I've already learned great games this month. I've already, I've already got some hard decisions to make. I'm learning a whole lot more. <laughs> so uh, uh, April is usually your 90-game month. I mean, yeah, it's hopefully not, but yeah. Uh, I mean, there was literally one day um, on one of our uh, gathering trips that you had... I think it was 15 new games in one day. 15. Yeah. That's what I'm counting on. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but for now, uh, we will just be streaming uh, games that we learn and play. And uh, yeah, make sure to join us on Twitch uh, at Board Gamer Stuff. Uh, we stream Monday. Uh, sorry, not Mondays. We stream Wednesdays and Sundays at 5 p.m. Central. And on Game Guildies on Mondays at at 6 p.m. Central. Um, Scott just asked, is Deep Dive out yet? It is not. It was just on Kickstarter. I don't know if it's still on Kickstarter, but you it might. It was on with Point City, wasn't with it? With Point City. So it might still be on, uh, or you can maybe late pledge. I assume there'll be a late pledge, but it'll be out from AEG probably in the near future. I would say probably summer, if not sooner. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, what do we do on our streams? Um on on our streams, on board gamer stuff streams, we um, teach and we teach every game that we play on stream, and then we do a full playthrough. So come join us and uh, watch the games. And then on Game Guildies, we uh, talk about all things uh, entertainment related. Sometimes we will play board games. Sometimes we will talk about uh, things that are going on. We do video games and console games and VR. And uh, movies and entertainment, everything that uh, there is to talk about, we do, do on Game Guildy. So be sure to join us on both of those fine channels. Yep. So we'll be right back if you're on Twitch. See you next month. Yeah.